Praise the Lord. As I always say, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to celebrate what God has done for you. <clears throat> One of the things that throughout the course of a week, we come back, God always shows himself in that week. You know, if you're looking for God, you're going to find him. Because the Bible says you seek him with all your heart. And that's what it's about, seeking him every day. Not just randomly, but every day. Making a decision every morning. You know, I always like, I, I, I always like uh, <clears throat> Daniel, because Daniel purposed in his heart not defile himself in king's meat. He purposed in his heart. And that's what it is, to make a purpose, to decide, hey, this day, you know, we're going to make a stand. I never forget, you know, in, in Moses' day, he, come, he, he, he made, when they made the idol and all that, when he said, line them up, who's on the Lord's side? Mm -hmm. And that's where we come at this point in our life. Who's on the Lord's side? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sometimes when I, I'm at work, I do some of the backing training. I usually, primarily, I probably do the road about 80% of the time, 89%, but sometimes I do backing if the main instructor's gone. And, and, and I always want to be able to demonstrate it right, you know, and, and, and do a good job. And, and uh, so I was out there. And I always pray that I can translate what I'm doing to the student. And one of the things that, that was brought to me was the difference between a teacher and an educator. Now, a, a teacher is teaching the material, but an educator is more like a mentor, where they're investing in others. And then that's what it's about. And I, I got to thinking about that. And, and, and when I was, I was backing up, and I was so happy, everything went well. And, I, and we have these pickup trucks that we get in, and this one student can be in a truck, in a pickup truck, and another can be out there backing. Uh, so that they could just watch the other one and not influence them or anything. And, and, I, and I did that, and I got in the truck, and I would just remember saying to, you know, out loud, I thought I was by myself in the truck. I didn't realize somebody was in the back seat. But I remember saying, Tim, that was awesome. That was awesome. I remember saying that, and then this voice comes from the back, back seat. I didn't even say, yeah, that was awesome. I'm, I'm thinking, <laughs> got a voice in the truck. You know, I thought, wow, where'd that come from? But, but, you know, and then I said, you know what? God thinks we're awesome. Yes. That's what he thinks. And, yes. you know, we're the apple of his eye. Yes. That's what, you know, Tammy was saying the other, other, other day here, that, you know what, we, we look at God, expect those things, you know, yes. those great things that happen in your yes. life, those good things that happen. Yes. They expect those. When we get a picture of how much God loves us, it changes everything. Because the thing I love about God the most is that, that when we make a mistake or, or we sin, he's right there to forgive us so we can move on to the next phase of our life. Yes. You know, he's not there to knock us down and, and <clears throat> oh, you're a worthless individual. Because I, I meet people, and, and, and that's the way they look at themselves. Mm -hmm. I remember <clears throat> when I went to high school, I, I had a, a – he, he was a, a distant cousin of mine. I, I just didn't – just met him there a few years in high school. But he had the worst nickname I ever heard for, for a child. Worst nickname. And I, I never did talk to his parents why he, they thought, it, but his nickname was Lost Child. And I thought, how horrible. And everybody called him Lost Child. I never called him Lost Child. I called him by his name. Because yeah. uh, he's not a lost child. He's, how are you a lost child that they have no direction to go? Yeah. You're not a lost child when it comes to God. You're found. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and, I, and hallelujah. Yeah, that, that, yes. uh, that deserves it. Because that's what it was about. That was not about. We was playing baseball or softball at the, in the in, uh, gym, and he hit the ball, and he took off running. And, and you know, he's only going to get the first base. First, they caught the ball, and he got about halfway, and he stopped, and he just gave up. You know, he got about halfway, and I'm thinking, well, the first baseman could have dropped the ball or, you know, throw it too high or something. But he quit, and I, I'm thinking, you know, these stick in your mind. He says, no, we can't quit. we got to run all the way through. Yeah. That's what life is about, running all the way through. Yes. I, often, I often share this, you know, in, in order to have any career success at all, or life success, you, you get up, dress up, and show up every day. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. That's how it works. In the same way in God's realm, you, you get up, you dress up, and you show up every day that you're going to be a Christian every day. Yes. Hallelujah. And I, 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 this, this scripture here has been in my mind. Uh, it's up, I, 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 when I get up in the morning, I, I love to have my smartphone because you can pull up scriptures. You can, and I do that every morning. It's a routine. And one of the things that came up 
was I say in 43 because I've been thinking about <clears throat> ever since that incident happened, how much God loves us. It's Isaiah 43. I want to share a few verses. Uh, Isaiah 43, 1. But now in spite of past judgment for Israel's sins, thus saith the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I redeem you, ransom you by paying a price and sitting and leaving you captives. Hallelujah. I have called you by your name. You are mine. How powerful is that? You know, people used, to, people used to always say, well, you know, Tim, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And, you know, I used to always hate that. Then when Jesus came in, I said, you got that. <laughs> That's true. It is who you know. And who you know is Jesus Christ. That makes all the difference. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And I, I love it because God is walking with you through this life. Come follow me. It means he's walking in front of you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. Right. Hallelujah. When you walk through the fire, you will not be born, burned or scorched, right. nor will the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt to the Babylonians for your ransom, Ethiopia, a province of, a province of Ethiopia in exchange for your release. For, this is verse 4, because you are precious in my sight. That's what God thinks about us. And we ought to think that same thing, that we are precious. Yeah. I remember my youngest girl, daughter was born, and I'm telling you what, that's a life changer. When you saw the process, I was in the living room when she was born. And I remember the nurse, when and she was, she did some things when they first come out, their eyes and stuff, and then she, she turned. I'm just standing there, she said, do you want to hold your daughter? I'll never forget that. She had a full head of black hair, full head. She said, you want to hold your daughter? And I, I just I just remember holding that little girl. And I remember, I just, I just, I was just overwhelmed. And I remember saying, how can somebody not believe there's a God to see this little girl? I, I was just so, I was just so happy. The, the fact that you, you, you look at this life and God gives you the responsibility for that life. It wasn't just like, okay, I have this baby now and the baby has to kind of make it on its own. It don't work that way. It's not the jungle book. You know, it ain't going to quite work that way, right? You are responsible for it. And I remember when she got dedicated to the Lord, her and her sister, we both dedicated, <coughs> both dedicated to the Lord. And I remember the priest saying, said, dedicating your kids is only one half. You have to stay dedicated too. And I thought, wow, that, that's powerful. It's not me just giving to the Lord. I have to give my life to the Lord and make sure that little kid grows up and understands what God is all about, right. what he represents, so her life can change. Right. That's the big difference. That's the big difference when it comes to raising kids. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, people say, well, we got a generation gap. They always said that. They had a generation gap when I was little. You know, generation gap. I said, because you don't have nothing to talk about. Well, you do have something to talk about because kids like to hear about the Lord. They like to hear stories in the Bible. They do. I asked my girls one time uh, when I come up here to visit them and, and, they, and, and what, what was the most important thing they remember. You know, it's funny what they say when they get now they're older and they, and they say, you know, Daddy, it wasn't about the clothes. It wasn't about going out to eat. It wasn't about going to the movies. It wasn't about that. They remember we used to go down here at Des Moines River. And they had a picnic table down. We go down by the Des Moines River and we set Des Moines River. You know what we do? We do this. We study God's word and we pray for him. That, it's funny what they remember. You know? That, that's what they remember because this changed their life. All the pants you buy them and the shoes and the lipstick. Yeah, that, that makes a difference. But it don't change the heart. Right. This is what changed the heart. Yeah. And, and I thank God for my girls. I, I thank God for them every day. Verse 4, I'm going to finish it. <clears throat> Verse 4, because you are precious in my sight and honored, because I love you. This God said, because I love you, I will give men return for your, you and your peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. Verse 5, I will bring your offspring from the east where they disperse and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give up. To the south, uh, keep not back. Bring my sons from far off and my daughter from the ends of the earth. Even everyone who was called by my name, listen to this next, this part, I love this, whom I have created for my glory. Hallelujah. Boy, that's worth a whole lot in. For, my, for whom I have formed, who I have made, 
Isn't that powerful? God created for his glory. God created you for a noble purpose. You are not just here by happenstance. I say that a lot because it's true. There's a reason you put on this earth, and it starts with glorifying God. And we start doing that in our life. That's what changes your life. You know, it's it, so much time. You know, the, the only person I really be honest that I have trouble staying around is a person who complains all the time. I mean, they complain about everything. It doesn't make it. Well, you know, the company gave us a raise. You know, well, hallelujah. You know, well, they could have given us more. I said, what are you talking about? They could have went the other way. <laughs> they could have started taking stuff away. We're not going to pay for this and this. Why don't you be grateful for that? That's what you ought to start with. Be grateful. Well, you know, Tim, uh, you know, I don't know. My car's on the last leg, and I don't want you to pray for a new one. Why don't you pray that God bless you? But I'm going to thank God for this car. i tell you what, I've had to do a lot of praying, and I'm going to tell you to make it home before. I remember that. You know, it's chugging, it's chugging. Are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? But i tell you what, we made it. I remember one day I was driving from uh, uh, Burlington to Mount Pleasant, and I had a little car, way too small for me, let me tell you. But I had a little car, Mazda GLC. It ain't a great little car. It's too small a car. I'm telling what, I, I feel like them in a smart car, you know, like this. <laughs> like that guy in Incredibles when he was driving, that's what I feel like, driving this car like this. And the car's wrapped around you. Like I had to spray the car on you to go like this. So I'm driving, I'm driving, and all of a sudden it's rattling. I mean, it just started rattling. I heard this terrible noise. I thought, what's going on? So I pulled up the road and stopped on the side of the road. And a friend of mine came and said, what's going on? I said, well, it's all right. I think you just got a minor issue. It's all right. And, and they had they put a little piece of white fiberboard underneath the, the, the front of the car, and that's what happened. It's, it, it's fallen down. <clears throat> and the guy left, and guess at that very spot, at that very spot, I could have stopped anywhere on the, on the road, had to grab a shoulder. Guess at that very spot, there was a piece of rope, a little piece of rope. Who, who could plan that out? I mean, who could have possibly planned you stop right there? I didn't have to walk. I didn't have to ask. Who could have planned that right there? And I tied it up, got it home so I could take care of it. Who could have done that? There's there's nobody in the universe could have planned that out. Well, Tim is going to have this trouble today, but I got a piece of rope that somebody left that fell off somewhere and just sat there for months and months and months, and it was right there when I needed it. That's how God comes through. That's exactly how God comes through. And, th and this morning... You want to be thinking about that. Yeah. You want to be thinking how many times God has come through for you. Yeah. Now, what makes you think he won't come through again? Right. You know, they used to sing that song, you know, he, he, he brought me this far. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. Right. That's it. You know, he, he, he grows you. That's what, <clears throat> that's what I was thinking about, just the relationships I dealt with, and you get in those situations, how you handle it 20 years ago. You know, I, I'm just to be honest, I used, I used to have a temper and, you used to fight a lot and all that stuff. But you know what? As you get older, you realize that was a waste of time. Amen. Rather than fighting, maybe I need to start praying. Amen. And it's amazing how when you pray, you don't want to fight. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to duke somebody out, duke, duke them out, you know, when you're praying for them at the same time. <laughs> it, it, it just don't work. They don't fit together. It's amazing that fists come down and they go like from this to this. Yeah. It's a world of difference. You get out of your knees and how God can say, no, what are you fighting for? How are you going to lead that guy to the Lord when you're punching him out? Yeah. You know? It don't work that way. I said, brother, I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to fight with you. I'm going to pray for you. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, if you think you want to beat me up, you know, ain't the first time I did beat me up. But you know what? I ain't going that route. You know why? Because there's, there's greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. I don't have to fight. Because my battles, God already fought my battles. And this one, we ain't going to fight. I'm going to give you over to the Lord and let the Lord deal with you. I'm walking away. Oh, you're scared. I said, no, no I'm, I'm not scared at all. Because God, God didn't give me a spirit of fear, but he gave me wisdom. <laughs> it wisdom to know that that ain't the way to handle it. There's a better way to handle it. If we would pray first, that would keep us from getting in so much trouble in our life. I'm telling you. I'm telling you something. I mean, what, what, what job should you be at? What house should you buy? And sometimes we get so disappointed because something falls through. Man, I thought, well, God, I, I thought everything was going to work, everything, and it fell through, you know? Because, you know, when I know when things like that fall through, you know what God said? Got something better for you. Yeah. That's what it is. You want what you want now, or you want to wait and let me give you something better? 
Because God, that God does that. Sometimes I just see God do so many things so you know it's God. You know it's not you. Absolutely. You cannot say, I did that. I did that. No way. You know it's not you. But you know it's God. And so today, as we go and open this uh, testimony time up, remember those things that you had to declare out of your mouth that it was God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to open this up. Testimony, because we all got something to share with God. Yes, James.
makes all the difference. You know, we can pray for them. Yes, Jim. Okay. John. Someone else. Man, thank you for that, because that, because that, that's a great opportunity. You, you can imagine if you get somebody saved at four or five years old, and they lived to seventy. Say they just lived to seventy, eighty years. How many years can they serve God? Yeah. You know, how many lives can they influence? I mean, it's good to come to the Lord any, any, any age, obviously. But you get a little one that's totally dedicated to the Lord. A lot of years of influence. So that's good. Thank you, brother. That's right. Amen. Amen.
good. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that's, that's awesome, Sheila, to share that. I, I know I was watching a kid's movie, and, and sometimes in the kid's movie they have profound statements in there. And one was just as simple that sometimes the, the road that we avoid, you know, we don't want to go down that road. We, we, we take a turn to avoid it. We still end up meeting our destiny on that, on that road we try to avoid because God's always ahead of you. You know, he knows where you should be, you know, and he knows where to get people together and, and that cross world to change a life. I, I never forget, uh, I was I was up in Des Moines visiting and I wasn't quite living the way I should be. And I just remember this kid, he was about 12 years old, and I was, I was walking um, down the outside of the balcony. I was walking and this kid, you know, uh, said, how you doing? How you doing? And he said this response, and it just got me thinking. He said, I'm blessed. That's what he said. That's my, he just said, I'm blessed. He didn't him haul around, you know, well, God, God this. He, he didn't, he just, those words came out so quick, you know, that he knew it was from here. When somebody says, I'm blessed, you understand where they realize that, you know. He didn't, he didn't give me the Roman road map or nothing like that or anything like that. He just said, I'm blessed. That told me there was a change in his heart. He's only looked like he's 12 years old. But he understood that. And I tell you what, that's what can change people's lives. When they see that there's a difference in you, because there's a glow. I, I, I've noticed that, you know, when Christians really love the Lord, there's a glow about them. There's a joy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not just being happy, but there's a joy that bubbles up inside of them. Despite the circumstances, right. despite what's going around them, right. they still have that peace. That's what Jesus said. Let not your heart be troubled. You know, he's going to give you that peace that the world don't understand. They don't understand why he can be so calm in this situation. Right. See, when, when I teach, you know, they, sometimes they don't understand why I'm so calm in the truck. You know, for the simple reason, first of all, I know how to drive this truck. And I know how to stop this truck. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if I need to stop this truck. But I found out the calmer I am, guess what? The calmer the student is. If the instructor is nervous, you know what it's going to be? The, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be yeah. chaos. You got a person driving a forty-ton vehicle that's nervous. You know, you know we, we don't need that. No, calm down, calm down. We got this. You know why? Because I'm in the truck with you. Okay, I'm I'm beside you. I understand. We're, I tell them all the time. We're gonna get home. Don't worry. About it. We're always gonna get home. So don't worry about it. Because I can drive this truck too. We're gonna make it home. And then God said so many times. He's saying, I'm with you. I'm with you. And, and sometimes I, I feel like if you look at Jesus, sometimes when he was preaching or saying, the Bible said he cried. I mean, it, he cried out. It came out with force, you yeah. know. And his biggest thing was, I just wish they just believed me. Yeah. That, that's what it is. It was like a cry. Don't they understand who I am? I'm the God of man. So many times Jesus called himself the son of man. I think that's just a, a, a tender way to put it. You know, I'm son. I'm, I'm just like you guys. I understand. I am God. But I'm also man, so I understand. I understand the tears. I understand the hurt. I understand the rejection. I understand. But you know what? God lives in you. I live in you. If I made it through, guess what? You can too. You just got to let me take control. That's what it's all about. You know, they used to always say, you know, God is my co-pilot. You remember the stickers used to come out? I said, that don't make any sense at all. The reason it didn't make sense, I don't want God to be the co-pilot. He needs to get over here and be the pilot. <laughs> That's what he needs to be. I'll be co-pilot with him, but he needs to want to be flying the plane. Because I know. But the, you got a main pilot, you got the other pilot. But you, we need God needs to be over there. Okay? And we need to let him pilot the plane. Because you know what? We're going to get there. When they was on the boat in the water, he said he's going to go on the other side. I say, what well, Jesus said in the boat, we're going to get to the other side. Amen. We're going to get to the other side. So I'm going to let him be the pilot, and we're going to make it to the other side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes.
Praise the Lord. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. That's what we're here for. That's what the body of Christ comes together for. You know, pray for one another. Yes. Let's uh, go ahead and stand, and we're going to pray for these needs. Oh, God, we know that the enemy might be marching on, but we know that you are marching on, and you are greater than our enemy. You have put the enemy under your feet. And, Father God, we're going to lift you up because you are greater than. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, let us not forget that you are still the healer. Hallelujah. That you can be, Brother Ron, Lord, and just, just heal him. Heal him. Heal him. Heal him. Oh, Father God, that's what it's about. That's when we cry out at Cindy, a situation with Cindy, hallelujah, and with Carol, and with Tammy, and with all that, and, 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 and Chuck and Hus, all those situations, Lord. Hallelujah, that you would be with Nathan. Hallelujah, our, our pastor, that you would be with all those situations. Because you are the God that can deliver. You are the God that can heal. You are the God that can provide the way when there is no way. Yes, Lord. You are the God of truth and life and hope. Oh, Father God, there is nothing too hard for you. There is nothing. Nothing. And Lord, let us realize that you are all powerful. Let us. 
Hallelujah.
just uh, thank the worship team for yesterday. Um, looks so good. I want to take a picture of it. <laughs> you want to an action shot or? Yeah. No, we're not going to do an action shot. <laughs> I'm going to do my photo album too. You know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, um, we're going to continue on where we were at last night. This, this, this ain't over yet. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, Grab your uh, shirt tails and your strings <laughs> and uh, let's love on the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. He made the heavens and the earth. His love endures forever. He made the sun to give us the light. His love endures forever.
Lord, will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says, I am healed. His report says, I am filled. His report says, I am free. His report says, victory. There is power 
break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain, 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 Break every chain, break every chain. I believe, I believe with all my heart that every one of us are mighty men and women of valor, called, called and chosen for a time right now to this body in this city to break the chains that hold back religion. Sin, shame, doubt, fear. Lord, light up the darkness in our hearts yes. so we can go and shine a light so bright that there will be no doubt, no doubt that there is one God who lives and breathes and moves and has his being and who receives whosoever will, who will ever believe and call on the name of Jesus. Oh, there is an army rising up, and we need generals. We need those who will step up. We need those who will know their calling, know their purpose, know their gifts, who are unafraid, who are bold to come and just let it go. Let it go. Just let it go. It feels so good to let it go. Just to let it go. Oh, yes, Lord, let it go. asking who's going to go today with him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah.
church. He has a fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand. <laughs> And he's riding a white horse across this land. He has fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand. And he's riding a white horse all across this land. And he's calling out to you and me, will you ride with me? He has fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand and he's riding a white horse across this land and he's calling out to you and me will you ride with me will you ride with me and we say yes lord Yes, Lord, we will stand up and fight. We will ride with the armies of heaven. We'll be dressed in white. And we say, yes, Lord. Across this land, and he's calling out to you and me. Will you ride with me? And we say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We will ride. We say, Yes, Lord, we will stand up and fight. We will ride with the armies of heaven. We'll be dressed in white. And we say,
Thank you, God. Mute the cool. computer. Mute the computer. Mute the computer. Mute the computer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. You good? Heavenly Father. Yes, Father. Be with our pastor this morning. Yes, God. Give him rest. Yes. Make him whole, Lord. Divine health for him. Yes. Continue to pour out your word, your revelation to him. Let him know that he is missed dearly when he is not here. Yes. Continue to pour out your blessing on this worship team. Yes, Lord. Mike, as he leads this, yes. follows after your heart. Yes, Lord. It is our good pleasure to worship you in voice and in song. Yes. What a joy to worship the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords. Be with us for the remainder of the service with the children downstairs. Yes, Lord. Open our hearts to your word this morning. Yes. Eyes to see and ears to hear. Lead us and we will follow. Yes, Lord, we will ride. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, Suzanne, can I say something real quick? Yes, absolutely. I, I'm gonna, I haven't told Mike this yet either, but, um, but I always have a hard time holding together on that last verse, that song. The Lord was, spoke to me yesterday when we were up at uh, Heartland. And, you know, because we, we always long to be at the Lord. He goes, you cannot imagine, you cannot fathom how I long to have my bride be with me. He goes, you cannot imagine it. So as much as we want to be with him, we can't even fathom how much more he wants us yes. with him. Yes. It, it's just, I, I, I can't even, I can't emphasize that enough. I can't, I, I mean, what he spoke to my spirit was just, it, it was overpowering. Mm -hmm. I mean, he longs for us. Yes. I mean, I mean, we get that intimacy with him here, but you, you can't fathom how he longs to be with us. So anyway, I, I wanted to share that. I, I, it, it's so hard to hold it together on the last part because, you know, we sing to him, but we don't realize how, how he wants to sing to us and yes. how he wants to love on us. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That is awesome. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, <laughs> now that everybody's pretty much touched on everything I wanted to talk about today. We'll just do a review. How about that? We'll just do a review. We'll do a short recap. Um, you know, it's always, it's always encouraging when you're stepping in for our pastor, who is a wonderful teacher. And uh, it's always encouraging to know that you're on the right track. So thank you all. Your words, your prayer requests, your testimonies, um, even the worship set list, they're always an encouragement to get up here. It just really gives you a lift you need to know that He's already here. He's already ministering to all of us. And we're just going to continue on the service. So my inspiration for, um, for today came from my little death calendar. So, you know, it's those little things. We always try to keep the word all around us all the time. And I was just really struck by a verse. But before we get to that, we're going to do a little exercise this morning. So I'm going to start a little outside the box. You have to, you know, trust me here that no, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a test, <laughs> but I want all of us to close our eyes and we're going to visualize together, okay? We're going to visualize some things um, and we'll see where this goes. Trusting you, Lord. So I want you to think about your favorite song. Can you hear it? Can you hear the instruments? Can you hear the voices? Can you, can you just know how it makes you feel? Just enjoy that for a second. Think about your favorite place in the whole wide world. Can you see it? Can you feel the sand in your feet? Can you hear the ocean? Or can you feel the, the warm sun and that cold air in the mountains, surrounded by nature, wherever it is, just soak that in, your favorite place to be. Now I want you to think about your favorite people in the world. Hugs and kisses and laughter the people that make your life so meaningful. See their faces, the joy they bring, your heart breaks when their heart breaks, the people that just give life meaning. Now think about the last time that you laughed so hard, you had to wipe away the tears and your side hurt. Does it make you smile just remembering, having those beautiful memories? 
about the last time that you felt so completely loved, unconditionally accepted and loved? How special to have those memories. How special to just think back. Hopefully we don't have to go too far back, but no matter, those are moments in our life that are precious. Feel that warm, fuzzy. Think about the last time you felt perfectly at peace. The peace that God talks about in his word that passes all understanding. That peace that you feel deep in your bones. I always say in through the nose, out through the mouth, right, Jane? <sighs> so just let it go and just be in the moment. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Okay, now let's open our eyes. Sorry it took me now. <laughs> Hopefully you had many faces, many places, many songs that were coming back to you. What are some of the words that describe those feelings, right? Happy. Well, that's such a lame word. Happy. We can do better than that, right? Joy. Peace. <coughs> love. The Lord wants us to feel that way all the time. The Lord wants us to feel that way about him. Hopefully he was in there somewhere. So my scripture from Thursday, which I happened to read about an hour before I got a call from Sally saying Nathan was ill, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. It's complicated, and it's beautifully messy, but this life makes it hard to delight sometimes. To delight ourselves is a verb. It's an action. It's something that we have to do. It's a choice we make. No matter what's going on all around us, because we're not always in our favorite place, we're not always around our favorite people, we're not always hearing our favorite song, but do we know how to delight ourselves in the Lord, in the middle of all the junk, all the junk that is in this world? But when we choose to take our delight in the Lord, the reward is great. He gives us the desires of our heart. What are the desires of our heart? Not talking about paying a bill. Talking about walking in divine prosperity. Not talking about getting better from a cold. I'm talking about walking in divine health. I'm not talking about praying for those who mourn to give them comfort. I'm talking about raising people from the dead. I'm talking about resurrection power. Our God is the God of more than enough. Our God is the God of more than you can even think or imagine. Uh, uh, Sheila, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. Uh, Ephesians 4, 20. Okay, well then I'm going to look up what I meant. Because <laughs> that's not what I meant. <laughs> Off to a great start this morning. <laughs> Ephesians 4, is it 21 maybe? Nope, that's not even close. Um, no, 20, no. Well, okay. So, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. That's the scripture I meant. I'm not really, it's in Ephesians, I promise. That is powerful. Yes. Exceedingly abundantly. To do. To do. Not to think or imagine, to do exceedingly abundantly. It's him who's able. It's God who is able. He is able to do. He's the power. He's the action. Above all that we ask or think, we have to ask. We have to speak it out loud. We have to ask. But when we ask, we're asking according to the power. Where's the power? It's in us. The power is in us. The power is in the spoken word, is in the asking. That doesn't make any sense. The power in this world is in the doing, but in God, the power is in the asking. Because when we ask, if we can just believe, yes. oh, that sounds so simple. Yes. Doesn't it just sound so simple, yes. too good to be true? But it's so hard to do. That is so hard to do, to just believe. Because yes. when the circumstances don't match, to just believe. 
His word is true. Let's see if I got this one right. Uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24. Mark 11, 22 through 24. But you know what that does? That takes the, the pressure off of us. We just have to do the asking. We don't, have to have, we don't have to do the doing. We have to do the asking. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. He could have just stopped right there. Have faith in God. Yeah. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that who, whosoever, whosoever of us will say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. How many of you have prayed for something that you didn't see come to pass? And you believed. It didn't come to pass. Does that mean we stop believing? Do we stop praying and asking? No. Our job, our part of this, is to have faith in God. Our part in this is to say to the mountain. Our job is to speak to the mountains. Does anybody have some mountains in their lives that need to be spoken to? Be thou removed, mountain. Get out of my way. Be thou removed. Be thou removed. If I see a mountain, I speak to it. Be thou removed. If I get up the next day, I see a mountain. Be thou removed. Be thou removed. And you know what? Even if there's a little bit of doubt in there, the more I keep saying it, the more I keep saying it, the more I keep saying it, hearing come, faith cometh by hearing. Sometimes it's got to be what I'm hearing out of my own mouth. I got to hear it. I got to say it. You know, I, 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 Darlene and I had a little bit of an argument once because I said, this book has no power. What? So this is a book. This book doesn't have power. It's just paper. The power comes when we take what's on the paper, we put it in our hearts, and we chew on it, and we make it our own, and then we speak it out. That's the power that comes in this book. This book has a lot of really good stuff in it, but if I don't speak it out of my mouth, it's a book. I can understand it. I can have revelation. I can, I can know it. I can memorize it. But it doesn't have the power unless I believe it and I speak it. Right. Speak to the mountain. And he shall have, he shall, he will have whatever he saith. Whatever. Whatever. That means everything, right? Is there anything that's not whatever? <laughs> when you pray, believe. And if you don't believe, pray it again. And pray it again, and pray it again. I feel like sometimes we get so frustrated when we pray. I prayed, Lord. I prayed and it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen. I've seen, I've seen miracles. I've seen them in my spirit. I know that they were done, and it didn't happen. with. And I couldn't see it with my eyes. My physical eyes, I didn't see it, and I got frustrated. It is our job to keep speaking to those mountains until they conform. Those mountains don't know what I know. Those mountains don't have the spirit of God in them. I do. It's our job to keep pushing and pouring and speaking. That's our warfare. We have to open our mouths and we have to speak. Mountains of poverty, mountains of disease, mountains of fear, mountains of addiction, mountains of divorce, mountains of suicide, mountains of depression, mountains of anxiety. Be thou removed in the name of Jesus. Be thou removed in the name of Jesus. What's the mountain in your life called? Cancer, diabetes, you name it. Yep. Promotion. I claim mountain, you get out of the way, and I claim promotion. Yes. There should be no fear in us. We need vision, church. We need vision. We need to know what the desires of our heart are. Have we thought? I, have, I, don't, sit, I don't take time in my daily life to dream dreams, to imagine what are the desires of my heart. I'm too busy. <laughs> but you know what? That's why I'm so busy. I'm convinced. That's why I'm so busy. Because I'm trying to move mountains rather than just resting and speaking to them. Yeah. It's not my job to move the mountains. It's my job to speak to the mountains. I can sit in my recliner and speak to some mountains. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be. Yes. You know, I mean, think about, oh, it feels so good to take that moment to be with the Lord. 
feels so good to unburden ourselves. But we get so busy trying to keep it all going in life. Just let it go and just speak. This word, that's, I love, you know, Nathan and Sally, they joke about their sticky notes. I get this word everywhere I can around me because I, I do not do a good job of just chewing on it and meditating on it. I was thinking this morning, I was late this morning because, you know, I'm in the bathroom getting ready. That's where the God talks to me. Apparently, that's where I do most of my praying. Like, I'm going to have to bring my computer in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm going to have to work something out. But apparently, that's where I do most of my talking, or at least that's where I'm listening, right? Because I, 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 I don't have a million things to do, and I'm just getting ready for the day. And, you know, I could have prayed, you know, someone's calling, someone's, you know, my husband's talking to me. I was like, I just need five minutes. But, boy, no one wants to be in the bathroom when a girl's in the bathroom. Can I get an amen? <laughs> It's like some quiet, alone time. <laughs> but he talks to me, you know? And uh, so anyway, I was writing down a bunch more stuff. I had a dream last night that I had to get in here somehow. I don't know. We'll see. So that's when we mix this written word with our spirit and our heart, it becomes the living word. The rhema word is where the power is, right? That rhema living word. But I have to give it life. That spirit in me gives it life right? And that is where our belief comes. There's a time to pray for, to God for guidance and for wisdom, and then there's a time to speak to some mountains. I don't need to pray, Lord, if it be your will, let this cancer be gone. I don't need to pray that prayer. I need to speak to the mountain. Can I get, I mean, seriously, guys, like, I feel like sometimes God doesn't want to hear about my problem. God wants me to go speak to my problem. I don't need to ask. Now, I might need some encouragement from my fellow believers. I might need to be lifted up, but I don't need to ask God to help me. I need to go speak to the mountain because he has given us his word. He has given us the authority and the power to move those mountains. He said, what are you talking to me about the mountain? Go speak to the mountain. Go speak to the mountain. Talk to me about the wisdom that you need to know how to speak to that mountain. Talk to me about the direction. If you're at a fork in the road, you know, I don't need to pray, God, if it be your will. If I don't know his will, then I need to spend some time going back to the word and putting it back in here. Because his will should be so, follow the light. Follow the light, follow the light, follow the light. And if you don't have peace, then, there's, then you're in the darkness. It's really that simple. I mean, and, and, and I know, <laughs> we've been there, how on earth did I get in this mess? How on earth did I do this again? and you don't even know how you got there, yeah. just find the light. Yeah. Find the light. Light up the darkness. I've been praying that for like two or three years now. God, light up the darkness because it makes everything so clear. It makes everything so clear. It clears up the gray areas. We live in a gray world. There is some crazy stuff going on. Yeah. Crazy. How are we talking about transgender bathrooms? Yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Ridiculousness. Like, yeah. who... Do, like crazy. <laughs> I'm just, I'm blown away. But it's so simple if we just go back to the basics. I'm not, none of this is mind blowing. It's just a reminder for all of us. Uh, Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Luke 1, 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Philippians 4, 13. Power verses. Everybody knows them. Knows right where I'm going. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do we believe the word of God or do we not believe the word of God? We are living in a day where we cannot be mushy, mushy Christians blowing with the wind. We have got to know what we believe. Amen. There is a time coming when we're going to be able to delight ourselves in the Lord or we're not. When we are going to be so surrounded by crazy ridiculousness that we're going to not be able to rely on our happy place. You know, all those happy things, all those wonderful things, they're wonderful, but that's not everyday life. The Christian life is not for the faint of heart. 
You know, it is not. It is not wine and roses. It is not, but it is amazing. And we have only just begun. I don't care how long you've known the Lord, but we have only just begun to understand the depths of his love, the depths of what he has given us, the authority he has given us. And we better not need to be in our happy place to rejoice. So let's go to Acts 16, verses 23 through 33. The Lord gave us some people in the Bible and told us their stories so we would understand the power of knowing how to delight ourselves in the Lord. Paul was in prison after doing good in a city. That was the woman that, with divination say, these men are from God, these men are from God. And, and, and they told her to go get the devil out of her. Right? Nathan preached about that. And when they had lain many stripes on them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all of the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm, do, do, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. Amen. If that is not the most powerful story of finding a way to delight yourself in the Lord in the pits of our lives, not only... Were they delivered from their pits? The entire jailer's house was saved. Yes. The entire jailer's house was saved. That is what revival is. Yes. I, I highlighted a few verses out of here because I just, this is such an analogy of life as a believer. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them, right? We don't, they didn't do it for the prisoners to hear. They didn't do it for anybody to hear. They did it because they needed to delight themselves in the Lord. They had been beaten. They were shackled and chained. And they knew it was not God's purpose. I don't think they were praying, Lord, if it be thy will, deliver us from this jail. They're like, Lord, move a mountain. Get us out of here. We got work to do. We have work to do. They had no doubt. They knew that they were walking out of that jail. And suddenly... That's how God does it. We're just, you know, we're delighting in the Lord. We're praying, we're worshiping. And suddenly, there's an earthquake. No biggie, we're just going to shake the entire earth. Yeah. Doors are opened. The foundations of the prison were shaken. We need some foundations of some prisons shaken. Yeah. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. If that's not getting free and breaking every chain in the name of Jesus, I don't know what is. Yes. And you know what that's going to do? When those doors are open and those chains come off, they're going to say, what must I do to be saved? What? And they were the ones in jail. And the jailer is saying, what must I do to be saved? To them who are beaten, who are chained and shackled, who are despised by everybody in that city, what must I do to be saved? They got it. They knew how to delight themselves in the Lord, and they knew what the desires of their heart were. They were taking that city for the Lord. And all it took was one man in his house, and they took the city. Because you, I guarantee you, that jailer, he went and told a couple people. They got, out, they got out of the city. Everybody's like, you need to get out. We're scared. And Paul's like, I ain't leaving until I'm ready. Bring them. Tell them to come look me in the eye and act like I'm going to be scared. Paul was fearless because he knew. He knew how to delight himself in the Lord. 
Now, I'm not saying that we'll, we'll be beaten. I hope we never will be. But there's some moments we're in the pits. There's some moments we find ourselves shackled in shame, thinking, how on earth did I get here? But do we pray? And do we praise God in those moments in our pits? Or do we want to talk to God about the pit? I don't hear them saying a word about the darkness. I don't hear them. I don't know what their prayers were, but I have a feeling it wasn't, oh, it's so dark in here, Lord. Oh, Lord, these shackles hurt, Lord. I don't think that was their prayer. I think their prayer was, Lord, we got work to do. And we're just going to praise. And I'm just, and they're just renewing their strength. They're renewing their strength. They're renewing their strength. They're renewing their strength. They're drinking the living water because they were beaten. It was midnight. I bet they were pretty tired. I bet they wanted to sleep. would have been so much easier just to sleep. How many nights have we had like that? You know that there's something that you just need to wrestle out. Ooh, that pillow. Ooh, that pillow starts talking to you. So much easier just to go to sleep. And we're not in that situation. Again, the Christian life is not for the faint of heart. David, Isaiah, Paul, they knew the secret to finding their happy place in the midst of some serious trouble. They were able to remember one simple thing that got them through their darkest hours. Psalm 118, 14. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. I think that since maybe a year in the Lord, favorite thing to say. You are my strength and my song. I don't always sing pretty, but I love to make a joyful noise. <laughs> I love to make a joyful noise. And somehow the Lord anoints it and we're all good. But I love to sing songs. And singing a song, music makes us feel things. Music makes us go to a place, a happy place, a good place, if it's the right kind of music. <laughs> And sometimes it makes us remember how naughty we used to be before we met the Lord. But hey, music does something. It does something. You know, and I know that Nathan's talked a lot about the biology of, you know, cells and what it does. But music, it does something to us physically, emotionally, spiritually. It shakes, shakes the, the sound, shakes. The spoken word shakes things up. Music shakes things up. The Lord is my strength and my song. Isaiah 12, verses 1 through 6. And that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Thou, though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord! Call upon His name! Declare His doings among the people and make mention that His name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for He hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Great is He! Great is He! Yes, great is he. He is our happy place. He is. The minute we call on him. And I, and I said this earlier, guys, but just as in the days of Esther, the Lord keeps saying to us this morning, you were born for such a time as this. You were chosen for such a time as this. You were handpicked in Des Moines, Iowa, or wherever else around here you come from. I tried to leave Iowa. I can't even tell you how many times in the last 17 years, but did it ever pan out? Nope. Because this is where I am purposed and destined to be. And I have determined that I will do what the Lord has called me to do. Yes. Some of the best of, of, of our ability, <laughs> the Lord and I, the Holy Spirit and I. It's all in measure how much is me and how much is him, right? <laughs> Church, we are entering a season of reawakening. And because of that, there is a great move to distract those who have already been awakened, to get us to turn to the right, to get us to turn from the left to what God is doing. 
He's right here. He's right here. And we're not supposed to be over here. We're not supposed to be over here. He wants us right here, present, in the now. God is calling forth all those who have been slumbering, all those who have been hurt, all those who have walked away from the callings in their life. It's no accident, Toby, that you ran into him, who was on a delivery, who didn't even work there, yeah. from a tire. That God's like, well, I'm just going to set this all up. <laughs> Left a rope by the road. Who knows how long it had been laying there? Yeah. There are no accidents in the kingdom. No. Not one. No. God is building an army. Yeah. There is an army rising up. He is calling forth the dry bones, and he is asking us to speak to the dry bones. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37. We know this, but it just bears repeating. Uh, we're going to go 37, 1 through 14. We're going to go all the way through. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. They were all around us. And boy, are they dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Lord God, thou knowest. It's not our job to decide who can live and who is not. It's our job to raise up the standard and let the name of Jesus Christ do its work. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. If that doesn't sound like speaking to a mountain. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and I will cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Those bones are still laying there, unless we are going to be willing to prophesy as he commands. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and, I, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And suddenly, lo and behold, and behold a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, when I looked, lo, the sinew and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them about, and there was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, I do it twice. Then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, Come from these four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet in exceedingly great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. It is no different. That is the redeemed man that he saw. The dry bones of a dead Adam walking around generations later who God said, I'm going to breathe my life. And we received that life. We received the breath. We believed. But there's dry bones all around us who either have rejected, who are scared, who think they got to get right before they're, before they're worthy, the dry bones that need somebody to say to them, God loves you. God accepts you just exactly as you are right now. You don't have to get better. You don't have to be a better person. You don't have to stop this or not do that or don't do this or look like this. There are no rules. He wants you. Like you said, Peter, he just wants us. It is his desire that all should be saved. Everyone. We are his babies. 
You're going to just let some of your kids and your grandkids just go because you got a couple favorites? No, you want all of them. You want all of them healthy, whole, seeing them, hugging them, loving them. You're not going to pick just a couple. You want them all. And he prophesied as the Lord commanded. He was willing. Ezekiel, I don't know, Lord, you know. Can these bones live? But the Lord said, speak, Ezekiel, speak. Speak. You've got to open your mouth and you've got to speak. Yep. When was the last time the Lord told you to prophesy something and your lips were silent? I do it all the time, guys. I'm so guilty of this because I'm like, well, is that the Lord? Is it just me? People get tired of hearing me talk. I'm always talking. They won't hear that. When the Lord speaks, really, of all the things to be scared of, this is a safe place. This is a safe place, and this is where we hone our gifts. This is where we blaze that trail within us, when, where, we, where we understand and we get to know who we are in Christ. This is the safe place for us to hone those skills so we go out, and then we can, with confidence, share with, with the unbelievers. So this is not a message of condemnation. This is not a message to scare us about being in the jail and being beaten. This is a call to action. This is a call to arms. You are mighty men and women of valor. You are the watchmen on the wall. And we are at war. And it is time for everybody to take their place. Now, I had a dream, and it was one of the weirdest dreams I've ever had. There was a musical in it and <laughs> some very weird things going on. And I woke up this morning, and I thought, whoa. I was missing a big part of the message this morning. Because we are at war, but we have a general who's in charge. And in this dream, I was directing a musical. There was choreography, there was music, there was props, there all the things I don't have a clue about. And the pastor, wasn't Nathan, there was a pastor telling me everything I was doing wrong. And I got angry. I'm like, I am trying really hard here. I'm trying to step up and do this and do that, and I'm working really hard, and then try to, you know, make, make the church good and make it better and make it good, you know, and then, like, the choreography, it was a disaster. And I woke up, and I'm like, oh, I was working hard. I was trying my best. And the Lord was like, who is in charge? Were you called to do that? Do you know the first thing about choreography? Then why were you in charge of choreography? I put myself in charge, right? Epiphany, light bulb. I was never supposed to be doing any of that. I was not supposed to be doing one thing, and it was a disaster. And I started thinking, don't I do that in my own life all the time? Well-meaning, trying to work it hard, work it out taking the reins, being my own pilot, I end up in a whole lot of bad situations. And then, and then we get there, and we're like, Lord, what's going on? And he's like, remember me? Because I wouldn't have taken that route. I wouldn't have gone that way. I would have taken you this way, and you'd been there an hour ago. Yeah. You wouldn't have had to deal with that situation if you'd have just listened to me, if you'd have asked, <laughs> asked for a little direction. Yeah. Full steam ahead. You know, we're so busy. We're, so, we're, doing, we're doing good. We're doing good. Well, God doesn't want us to do good. God wants us to believe in him and trust in him. <laughs> and boy, I was angry. The more that pastor pointed out of what I had done wrong, I was angry. But should I, shouldn't I have been thankful? Because he pointed out there were a whole lot of other people that had a lot of talents that could have done all those things. Wouldn't it have been easier to lay those burdens down that I was never meant to carry? Let someone who actually knows that <laughs> do it? Shouldn't I have been thankful, right? But boy, when we work really hard, we want some praise. <laughs> we don't want to be told all the, the bad. We want the praise. The Lord's yoke is easy and his burden is light. If we're struggling, if we're, on, as my coworker calls it, if we're on the struggle bus, get off at the next stop. There is no reason for us to be on the struggle bus. Life should not all be uphill. Now, there's moments, there's headwinds. We face them, but it is not our battle. We are not the doers. We are the believers and the speakers. Yes. I can do that from my recliner. I don't have to pedal. I don't have to push the bus. No. I just go back. Go back for wisdom. Go back for direction. 
go back until I know that I know that I know this is where I'm going, right? Or this is where we're going. And I'm telling you, something happens when we, when we practice speaking that word. When we, when we hide this word in our heart, the more we speak it, we're blazing a trail. We're blazing a trail from the word to our heart, from our heart to our mouth, from our mouth out around the world around us. And the more we do it, the more we do it. If you've ever been in a field, there's a well-worn path. It used to be grass. Someone had to walk that a whole lot before it was a path. And pretty soon, it's a beautiful path that others can walk too. But somebody had to go first and mow down that grass and, and walk on the tall grass and tromp it down. The more we do it, the more we speak it, the more we believe it, the more we do it, the more we speak it. We're blazing a trail. And suddenly there's a path. There's a path that's so easy to walk down. Beautiful view, glass blowing in the wind. It's easy. But boy, the first couple times are not easy. But you do it anyway, and you keep doing it, and you keep doing it until there is a path. And then we just simply walk in it. Every army needs a general. The general has the master plan. And our God knows the beginning from the end. Okay. So we are at war. We know who wins, but there are still battles to be fought. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 4. And this is your prayer this morning as you pray for the offering. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I'm going to keep going. Uh, can you go down through six, sorry? Five and six. <clears throat> Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We have one thing to be obedient to, and that's the grace of God. Anything that is disobedient is anything but the grace of God. It's works, it's religion. Anything that is not grace is disobedient. Anything that tells you you've got to drive the struggle bus, you've got to push the struggle bus, you've got to pedal the struggle bus, that's disobedience. That, cast that down. Yeah. Cast that down. Yeah. And revenge, all disobedience. Whew, that got we worked up. Revenge. Revenge is the Lord's. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> nope. Hot potato. Don't go there. Yeah. It is the Lord's. Yeah. Our focus is to cast down those imaginations, to just let those thoughts come. They come. They come, but it doesn't mean we have to receive them. It doesn't mean we have to chew on them. It doesn't mean we have to let them into our heart where they start bringing in doubt and fear and all those things. Cast them down. You know, I always call those hot potatoes with the kids. They get that hot potato. Get it out of your hands as fast as you can. They're hot potatoes. Get them out. Kick them out. We don't have to let that junk stay. It comes. We don't always have control what thoughts go through our minds, but we can sure control what stays there. So will you join the fight? Will you ride? What's our heart saying? Are we willing to ride? There is nothing too big for our God to handle. Nothing. Tim says it all the time. God's not up there. Oh, how are we going to do this? How's it going to work out? I don't know. I don't know. That's a big one. That's tough. Never. But don't you know that when we let him really lead in our lives, there just aren't as many battles. There just aren't. There's still battles, but they're just not as many. And there are battles, and the battles in the church. And when we let go of all that junk, then we can focus outside of these walls. Then we can focus on exposing the true purpose, which is expelling the darkness. Our job is to light up the darkness and let the kingdom of God have its way in this world. How do we light up that darkness? How do we loose the kingdom of heaven on earth? We stir up the word of God in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits, and we blaze that trail from our heart to our lips and let the word of God come out of our mouths. The visual, the sword, right? It's the sword coming out of the mouth, the word of God. It's the same for us. When we, when we blaze 
the trail enough times that well-worn path is lit up all around us. When we lose the word of God, it blazes a trail not only within us, but all around us. Isaiah uh, 40, 28 through 31. He will direct our paths just like in the days of Moses. When it's dark, just follow the torch in the darkness. He is there. He will never leave us and never forsake us. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall not faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, Sheila. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall not walk and not faint. You guys preach my message. I wasn't lying. <laughs> if we can mount up, they're not flapping. They're flying. They are soaring. They are using the wind that's already there. They're not making the wind. They're riding the wind. I can do that from my recliner. I like doing things from my recliner. I can rest in my recliner. <laughs> I'm missing my recliner. <laughs> but that is how it's supposed to be. Those eagles, they pick their food, they come down, they get it, and they go right back up to Soren. So now we are going to repeat our exercise from the beginning. Only this time I'm going to read some scriptures to you. And we're just going to let the scriptures be our visuals. So let's close our eyes. And I'm going to just read the images the Lord's given us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of our life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <coughs> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as if it were a trumpet talking to me which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and the one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a, ja a jasper and a, sard a sardius stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their head crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. There were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, there, and which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And then in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had six eyes, excuse me, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters. And as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. 
Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she would be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet and worshipped him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, and the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the waters of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. And, thus, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord giveth them light." and they shall reign forever and ever. That is our happy place. That is where God wants us to live and move and have our being. I don't think those are future things at all. I think that is heaven. And I think heaven is within us. And I think we can go there anytime we want. We have to find the peace, right? We have to find the quiet place. You know where you can find those quiet escapes. Make it a priority, because if we don't delight ourselves in the Lord, we will never see the desires of our heart come to pass. So I encourage you, ask and believe. Yes, Lord, we will rise. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Continue to pray for our pastor. And uh, go in the name of Jesus. Amen.